Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the running, running journey. journey. Welcome to the running journey. Welcome to the running journey. Welcome to the running journey. Running journey, yeah. Welcome to The Running Journey, a transformative podcast telling the story of two brothers faced with a very tough time in their lives that decided to do something about it, get healthy, get fit, and start jogging. The Running Journey will take you through half marathons, marathons, Ironmans, ultra marathons, and their attempt at qualifying for the Boston Marathon. Don't forget 5Ks. Don't... Sorry. We're certainly <laughs> not going to forget 5Ks, Charlie. This is The Running Journey. Listen to us while you run. That's a great okay. idea. Okay, I think we have our intro. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Rob Tietro here. I'm here with my brother, Charlie. What a fun day that was, Charlie. Congratulations. You just both qualified for Boston. Your time at the Big Rebel Southern California Marathon, uh, 2.54, two hours, 54 minutes. Congrats. That's an unbelievable time. Thank you. So how do you feel right now? Uh, I feel uh, kind of exhausted. Uh, I feel, I feel, um, I I don't know what I feel. I feel great. Uh, Okay. Let's talk me through the race. So obviously it's a, it's a, it's a race that's a little different in that there's kind of some elevation change. Talk me through the race and kind of what your thoughts were going into it. And how that played out? Uh, my thoughts going into it. So it's a the second half is an easier course. The co- the second half part of the course is a lot easier. The hardest part of the course is the first nine miles. Um, so we really wanted to kind of not push it on the first nine miles, and um, <clears throat> really wanted to kind of conserve energy, keep energy in the tank for the last the last section of the race and that's kind of what we executed um and what happened was yeah so we we kind of did a huge huge negative uh mile 18 i kind of started pushing it a little bit and uh, i felt great okay, so i'm going to slow you down i'm going to take you back to okay so you, you get there uh well, it's a 6 a.m start i guess yep 6 a.m start first three miles a uh, bit of elevation change but also some hills in there those are a little tougher. Yeah, and we were at high elevation, so those were yeah, those were pretty hard, but we took them really easy. Like we took it really easy there to kind of conserve. Also energy. cold, right? It's it was high elevation and it was cold. I think it was minus two or three when we started the race or four or something like that. So uh, Celsius. Yeah. It's a cold morning, so it's cold. You're at uh, elevation and you're kind of running into some hills. A bit of downhill, but then mile three, a little bit of uphill. So. Um, I think we came out of that, uh, what is it, like seven and a half minute miles, something like that, the average for those three, something like that? Yeah, after mile three, we were about a minute and a half above seven. So, yeah, about there. And then the idea was that we can just make it up on the down. We had never run this race, so neither of us knew what to expect. We had run some downhill marathons, but well, one, we had done the, the Mount Charleston one, which I remember thinking aiming at 345, and we came in at the mid 320s. So, kind of came 20 minutes below what we were expecting. So we, we had a feeling that we'd be able to make up some distance. So how uh, the legs, t- talk me through kind of when you started to feel that it was downhill and what you wanted to do. So at mile 10, it's, it's extremely, it starts getting pretty hard downhill. And from a, from a, an aerobic capacity perspective it's not really hard to run fast but from uh, your legs will get really pounded and from 10 to about 18 10 to 17 maybe it's it's all pretty severe downhill and and my legs were i was my legs were really sore at 14 15 my foot my i could feel my foot like my foot was injured back in april and i could feel my foot on every step uh, i was kind of a different feeling I could feel it. It was pretty painful, but it was, it wasn't bad, but, uh, but so the strategy was just to kind of let it, let it flow, you know, 
And, uh, what, and I think we were, I felt like I was holding back the whole way, up to 17 anyway. So, so you, you talked about your aerobic capacity. So when I do marathons and I've, you know, I've only run six, but I feel like most of the time it's my cardio that's stopping me at the end. Cause you just, you can't push hard enough because your heart's been pumping for hours and hours. And like, but in this one, it was, it was kind of more for some parts, it was the legs stopping me, right? Stopping you perhaps. Well, I think that's like not a straight up equation. I think it's kind of more complicated. Like I feel like when your legs are tired, you get more inefficient running and your heart starts working more. And so those things are kind of related, but at the same time, it's also a perception, perception of effort. I think when, when you're, even if you're not working hard from a heart standpoint, but your legs are working hard, like it, it feels harder. So therefore your brain thinks you're working really hard, right? <laughs> yeah. That, that's how, like, I think of mile 23, like, I mean, <clears throat> mile 23, I kind of, felt like maybe I was bonking um but that was just really mind games like my mind I had conversations with with myself there in mile 23 and it was just keep going but at some point it was like am I bonking here or am I, am I still good uh so I just maybe slowed down a little bit to finish but uh, it was okay. pretty standard stuff for marathon runners to be talking to yourself I do it all the time <laughs> crazy what you go through when you're doing it uh so you thought, so I felt the same thing. I was about a minute behind you at that point, And I felt like, okay, we've just come off this unbelievable downhill. And we were doing like, I don't know, 615s or 620s or 610s or whatever the heck those miles were. And then all of a sudden it's kind of flat, flatter. And I was doing seven minute miles. And I was like, well, this sucks. Like this is, this is slow. And that's when the, the mental aspect starts kind of kicking in telling you that you're not able to do this you're not going to do it you're a failure why are you running so slow all that kind of stuff or like you went out too hard you're not able to do it yeah. now yeah i thought maybe like i started pushing at 17 18 like i feel like up to 17 i was slightly holding back and then at 17 i was like i, I think i'm good to go now and i started pushing at 17 and then when i hit 23 i was like oh did i go too early did I go a little bit too early and maybe I did a little bit but I just kept going and it, and it was fine but I just had to overcome that mental conversation I had yeah I like talking to myself too because it it, uh, it tests your sanity a little bit it's <laughs> uh, that and doing the math right math for pacing and percentages and how much have I completed and how many 13ths do I have left or quarters or eights or you see, I usually, I usually am like that. Like I'm doing math the whole time, but today it was kind of weird. I was like in the zone and I wasn't even like, yeah, half, I didn't the time do math. I, half the time I didn't even know how fast I was running. I was just like, am I, am I running hard enough for how much, how many miles there are left? And, and I kind of really did it completely by feel. I seriously kind of no clue after, after we kind of, after I pushed a little bit at 17 and, you were kind of giving me splits before then on, on how fast we were running. After 17, I didn't check my watch once. I just, I just it, it was kind of a surreal feeling, actually. I was just kind of running how hard I thought I could run. Yeah, do you advise people? Do you think that's a good call? Do you think other people should try that? I think so, too. But I think, yeah, but you need to, one, get the training in so that you know you need to have that perception of what can I do, like, what's a realistic amount of effort I can do for 10 miles or what's a realistic amount of effort I could do for five miles. So you need training and then you need experience in races. So I, I would say not your first race, but after you've done five or six, I feel like that's, that's the trick. Actually, that's kind of a trick to get your maximum performance. Yeah. If you just keep pushing out the effort at your max capacity, knowing that you have 10 miles left, five miles left, three miles left, whatever time will be, will be right. If it ends up being, if, if because of the conditions that day and whatever, you're able to six and a half grade, but if it's a tough day and you're doing eight minute miles, as long as you are pushing at the, the pace that you know is going to leave you just enough energy in the tank to finish and a little bit of kick at the end, probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like, um, yeah, I felt like I, I knew I was 
I knew I was at a good pace. Like I, I didn't know exactly. I knew I was going pretty, pretty fast. Uh, much faster than I could have ever dreamed in my dreams, actually. Like, I knew I was going fast, but I, I just knew, I knew, I, was, I just kind of knew that I had it in me, even though I did doubt myself a little bit at 23. Right. Okay, so 254, uh, what does that do relative to Boston for you in your age category? Well, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 310, 310 was, was the cutoff. So 16 under, uh, I think we're good. You going to run Boston? Yeah, for sure. I can't wait. I'll go with my wife. Uh, so it'll be a great time on trip. And yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. It's kind of the holy grail of running, right? Like why, uh, I remember when we first kind of thought about qualifying for Boston, I remember telling you, I don't think I'll run it. I just want to qualify for it. Cause it's kind of like a goal to qualify yeah. for it. And I remember thinking, no, no, once I do my 309.59, I'm good, I'm done. And then you're like, really? You're not going to run it if you qualify? And I was like, nah. But now I'm like, obviously, I want to run Boston. It's like if you're a golfer, you want to go to Augusta, right? If you're whatever, it's the, uh, like, why qualify if you're not going to go run it? Yeah, yeah, no. It's, uh, I mean, it's kind of surreal right now for me that uh, uh, May March 2021, I uh, – I set a goal to break three hours in three years. I gave myself three years, 18 months later. I mean, I, I did it. Like, so it's amazing. And, and between that, I had a goal to qualify for Boston. And that was kind of, kind of a lifelong dream. Like, I mean, so I, ever since I've been running, that, that's been my dream, you know? And How long have you been running? So did a bit of running in high school to get in shape to play hockey. Uh, and then when my dad started doing marathons, that kind of inspired me. And um, so I ran for about three years, 2015 to 2017, and then we stopped. And then I started back in, in March 2021. But but it was always something that uh, something that I wanted to do. So it's great. I don't think so I've ever you, really. How do you feel about having done it? Yeah, well, for me, it's like it's almost like it's too much too fast because I never really had, well, I, I never, so I was a good runner in high school. I, I, you know, went to provincials for 3000, 5,000 meters and I didn't win provincials or anything, but like for Manitoba, I was, I was a decent runner, but I never really, you know, I did a marathon when I was 18 and I was like, okay, I did a 358 kind of, kind of without training, but I trained a little bit, but I was like, okay, I can run a marathon. I did a sub four. I was, I was kind of good. And I never really thought about running or qualifying for Boston after because it just kind of wasn't on my radar. And then I got fat, I got obese and I just kind of life got away from me. You, you know, you get four kids and you just, you make different priorities happen first and you're, you're not mentally where you need to be. And you're not even thinking of doing a 5k jog, never mind qualifying for Boston. So I was at a spot where I did not jog for, I don't know if it's, 15 years or 12 years or whatever it was. So for me, yeah, it's been a little bit because a year and a half ago in March, you know, kind of like you, I don't remember how big you were, but you know, I weighed 250 pounds and I was like, okay, I'm going to make changes in my life. That's enough of this. And I'm going to make changes. And I just thought, what if I could run a marathon? What if I could run a, a marathon again? That's how it started for me. What if I could run a marathon? And then I did, I, I jogged, 5k every day for the month of june to raise money for cmv cmv awareness and i was just like yeah, 5k it's every day it's doable and then that got me the urge to set the target of running a marathon which i did my my first kind of marathon back in september 14 months ago but i mean i did that in 448 i wasn't i certainly wasn't thinking boston i was thinking maybe i could do a sub four and then we did the sub four together in tucson that was when was that charlie in december december 2021 yeah yeah so that was like 11 months ago 14 months and so 448 358 323 and then 256 so it's surreal for me you ask me how i feel i don't i feel like i'm an imposter like i feel like i don't belong here because i just kind of started doing this and it's obviously i dedicated a lot of time to it and but it's, uh, I almost didn't have the time to appreciate it and for it to build up, right? Like, it's almost like, 
I don't deserve it. I mean, I do deserve it. Trust me, I deserve it. I did a lot of training for this, but uh, I know some people who try their whole lives, right? And, you know, some of our listeners and they try their whole lives and they just, it's tough, tougher, their age category or an injury or their, you know, whatever, their genes or something, it's tougher for them. So I guess I've been incredibly lucky that everything lined up and it's pretty yeah. exciting. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's been the last month in training. It's kind of like been a dream for me. Like I just, it's kind of like I put in a lot of work for like a year and a, a year and a half, but then all of a sudden everything came together. It's kind of like I feel like it's kind of just like kind of mir- kind of a miracle almost. Like it's it, like I mean, yeah, I put in the work, but all of a sudden it's like I, I feel like I'm tipped. You know. Anyways, it's crazy. Well, I talked to you this summer. You were at the pool, and you said something like. I asked you how the training was going for Boston and you said 0.05 or 0.5% chance likely of me running a sub 310. I think you told me. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, I was so, injured at the time, right? And yeah. Yeah, you can't see past that injury. You're thinking it's never going to get better and you're just like, this is not happening for me ever, right? Yeah. And that's like five months ago, four yeah. months ago, whatever it was. So yeah, congrats for coming back from that. Like that's, you know, I've knock on wood, I've never been injured. So it's, I feel lucky that I didn't have to go through that. But yeah, for those of you wondering what we do, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about kind of your big weeks leading up to this, but for me, it was roughly, what was I doing? Like, I think I was doing 50 to 55 miles, I think something like that, or 45 to 50 miles, something like that. So like kind of 20 on my long run. 13 to 16 on my midweek and then fours and fives the other days four five sixes the other days sevens so i don't know what, what was your training program like uh well i mean i had to adjust it all the time because i like i mean i basically only like i mean i was doing training all summer uh, but just big picture how many miles did yeah, you top big out? Picture. So, so i topped out at 70 okay but it was very very condensed because I really only started kind of feeling good about my foot on in September and I started kind of training hard there. And I basically, my program is like three, three workouts a week, the rest easy. Um, so one tempo, one speed, one long run. That's basically, and then the rest is just easy workouts. Yeah. Just uh, if people are wondering out there, you know, what, how did these guys do it in a year? What do I need to do in a year to get there? Right. Like, so it's, it's, you know, call it 40, some weeks were, I mean, if I wasn't training for a week, mind you, I almost been training for a race. Yeah. I, I aside from the time off after races, I've been training nonstop for a year. Well, a bit. Well, that, that's the, that's the major thing though, too, is, is I, I think it's just consistency over time it is, is like, I mean, you just, it's not going to happen. You have to be patient. It's not going to happen. And like for me, it happened like overnight, but it was like, I think it was just like kind of like a buildup of all that. Well, it didn't things. happen overnight, Charlie. You, you got yeah, over your injury I, overnight. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is people don't expect it to happen overnight. It's going to be, it's going to take some but time. But you, it, it didn't happen overnight for you. That's not, that's not what happened. You were running marathons. I, I know, I know. That, that's my whole point is that the way you improve is not by, by you're not going to be like, in a month from now, I'm going to be, you have to look at two years from now. Like you only improve over long periods of time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And you'll see it that, you know, if you do take up jogging or if you are jogging, I don't know, for me, it's like the early, um, you know, the low hanging fruit gains are fairly easy when you're, you know, I was obese. So when you're, you know, it's easy to go from 11 minute miles to 10 minute miles, right? That happens relatively quick or 12 minute miles to 11 minute miles. You know, that might happen over a month, right? If you just, if you're jogging, but to go from like eight minute miles to seven minute miles, <laughs> that one's almost impossible. Uh, but yeah, I think if, what I really liked about it when I started training was that I just immediately, I kept seeing improvements and I just felt so much better. And, you know, the mental clarity when you're out in a jog and I just, it was exactly what I needed for me to just, you know, be happy and be myself, right? 
Okay, so he qualified for Boston, ran the Big Bear, unbelievable time, 254 you did, I did 256. So that is... Uh, uh, well, unbelievable time as well. Yeah, I mean, just, it, it's surreal. Yeah, I mean, you did... Three, so, three, hours, three, hour, three hours was our stretch, was my stretch goal, beat it by six minutes. I mean, yeah, I just... Yeah, like on my on my tracking app, it's you know I think I did twelve personal bests today, <laughs> so it's like okay. I PR'd, I PR'd my five k, my ten k, my half marathon, and my marathon all in one race. <laughs> yeah, so it was a good day, good conditions, good weather, good wind, good volunteers. You know, kind of everything lined up perfectly for us. Good health. You know, I got over a cold. You got over your injury. It was just like great timing. We slept well. We ate well. The diet was good. The nutrition plan was good. But again, I'm a big believer that you, you focus on the variables you can control and we eliminated or, or controlled as many variables as we could. We did the best we possibly could for the variables. And then the other ones that we couldn't control, well, we just didn't stress about them. We didn't bother about them. We just, and then we just focused on the one thing that we needed to do today, which was our effort. And clearly- yeah, well, there, was, there was one other key, key, key thing today that happened right before, at 4 a.m. or at 3.30 a.m. You took three cups of coffee. No, you checked the weather app and you told me, I think it's going to be warmer. So I took a layer off and that was the critical, that was the key, key decision. I thought you were going to say you took a deuce or you took four pisses or you drank three cups oh, of coffee. I layered down. I layered, I layered down. down. Yeah. As I'm in the room over, <clears throat> you're making coffee or whatever at uh, 2 40 or whatever. Yeah. I was like, how is he up right now? Shouldn't he be sleeping? Oh, uh, yeah, like our sleep. Yeah. It was pretty neat too. Like last night we made dinner, hung out here and our dad's with us on this trip. And he started talking about his ultras that he did as an 11 year old, 11 year old, 50 mile ultras as an 11 year old finished. And I think he did it when he was 12, 13 and 14. And he finished like, seventh in the province or something in his last ultra uh 11 year old doing an ultra <laughs> it's pretty the, the story about how his, his mom didn't know and his dad just took him at, at midnight the race started at midnight and and uh, my grandpa just snuck him out snuck him out of the house and he started his ultra at 12 a.m and uh yeah it, it, it put a strain on the marriage it is how i understand <laughs> It was pretty neat, though. How uh, and then he's obviously been our inspiration. I don't know how many total he's done. Does he, what, is, what he's done like ten marathons or something like that? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Regardless, he's done a lot of marathons, and it's pretty neat to have him here and then have him at the finish line cheering for us. And it's actually just an unbelievable trip. If you're thinking of coming down to SoCal for this marathon, Charlie was guessing today. Forty percent of people probably qualified for BQ, so it's. Uh, it was a good day, and I think they can reproduce reproduce this and, and put ideal running conditions year in, year out, great time of year, good location. So it is an extra, a little bit extra expensive half or marathon, whatever you're planning on doing, but what an awesome experience. It's warm. You know, Winnipeg has a, slow, a snowstorm and a blizzard. We're here in sunny Southern California, so it's been good for that. Um, Charlie, anything else you want to add? Okay, well, congrats. Uh, let's, let's, yeah, I mean, Boston. Boston, Boston baby. <clears throat> Here we come. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.